Today we're taking a look at adding filler metal to your aluminum TIG welds. See, when I was first learning to TIG weld aluminum, or at least pretending like I was, I was just a kid in my dad's auto repair shop. Now, at that time, I thought that adding your filler metal was the key to really getting a nice stack of dimes, and I've learned now that I should have been focused on my torch hand first with the right arc length and torch angle. Either way, you're going to have to add filler at some point, so that's what we're talking about today. Now, over the years, I've learned that there are about three things that can go wrong when you go to add your filler metal into your weld pool. And I'm going to show you what those are and how to correct them, and also how to take a look at the end of your filler rod after you weld to tell how well it's actually going. Let me show you the setup we're going to be working with. I'm going to weld on 1 8 inch thick aluminum, and I'm set to 130 amps AC with the balance of 75 and 120 hertz frequency. I'm using a number 5 standard cup with a 3 30 seconds of an inch multi-mix tungsten. I'm going to set my gas flow at around 12 to 15 cubic feet per hour. Let's go ahead and dive into some of these problems you can run into when it goes to adding filler metal. Now the first problem to run into is really a problem more with your torch hand than with your addition of filler metal and that's running a really long arc length. Let me show you what goes wrong there. Watch my torch carefully after I strike an arc. I'll lift it back. See I've lifted that up to have a longer arc length. I'm feeding my filler metal in at a 90 degree angle to the torch and that's good technique. However, with that long arc, it's difficult to actually feed it in without having it melt off first. This introduces all kinds of contamination into the weld and I've exaggerated the problem here a little bit to demonstrate it. However, this is a common issue with most beginners I've worked with and I struggled with it for quite a while myself. Now we can look at the end of the filler metal afterwards to see what it can tell us. Oh man, you see how that's drooping down off of the filler metal there? This is bad news. If you start to see your filler metal drooping down and melting, stop. Don't shove that in there. It's going to just be full of contamination. You don't need that. Just take a minute, diagnose what's going wrong, clip the end off, and then start back up again. Now all of the contamination or the oxidation that gets on the end of that filler is going to end up in the weld and so I ended up with something that looks like this. It looks pretty bad. The solution to this is straightforward and it's practicing welds with proper arc length. And this is an exercise that we do in my online courses and in some other videos that I've produced that uh, allows you to really get the feel for that and you're able to watch how the oxidation etches off of the material and you're able to push a puddle forward with good arc length and torch angle before the complexity of filler is introduced. Another common issue has to do with the angle between the filler metal and the torch. Now the textbook answer is push your torch forward at about 10 degrees like this and then come in at a 90 degree angle to the torch to add your filler metal. Now that works, it's not always practical to do that and in all reality you can go a fair bit steeper but if you go more shallow this is where you run into some major issues. Let me show you what that looks like. In this case, I'm using quite a bit more torch angle that I should have, and again, I'm exaggerating this to really demonstrate the problem. Now watch here, even though my arc length is much better than in the last example, I'm still sending so much heat out that it melts my filler before it goes directly into the puddle. This is a problem because you want the puddle to actually melt your filler so that you don't end up with any contamination. Oh, that's gross. Here, if you take a look at the end of the filler metal, once again, there is that portion that's already melted. And if you're seeing this after you weld, this is a symptom of uh, some issues. Now, while the weld looks a little bit better with an improved arc length, it still isn't going to win any awards. Now, in order to correct this, it's just a matter of taking some dry run practice and then watching your torch angle and your filler metal and filming yourself with a camera to see this isn't a bad idea. It's pretty informative. Now, the third issue that's pretty common is trying to dab that filler metal in the wrong place. Rather than trying to put it right under the arc in the middle of the pool, you need to put it up on the leading edge of the pool so you stay out of the way of that arc and you can add it directly to the puddle and let the puddle melt that filler metal off. Let me show you what goes wrong when you add it to the wrong place. Here I'm using a 90 degree angle between my filler metal and my torch and I'm maintaining a reasonable arc length. However, I'm going to add the filler metal to the wrong location. So I'll go ahead and let it etch and form a puddle 
and then I'll stab it way back into the center of the pool. You can see I already fouled out my tungsten because it's difficult not to hit it when you're aiming right there for the center of the weld pool. This is problematic and introduces contamination in a variety of ways. Even as I progress, it's difficult to maintain a consistent width of bead when my arc keeps going out because of that. You can see there's a little bit of contamination there on the end of the filler and the weld. Well, so we were shooting too far back in that case, right towards the center of the puddle rather than the leading edge. But here I'll show you the opposite where I'm aiming a little too far forward. You can see that there are little droplets up in front of the pool coming off of this. And this is a much better problem than the other. And honestly, you can make a really nice aluminum weld even aiming right up there on the very edge or just ahead of it. Though this habit's going to be problematic with stainless steel or especially with titanium if you weld that in the future because your rod's going to stick if you aim there. Now that we've looked at those three issues, one having too long an arc, the next having too big of an angle between your filler metal and your torch, and the last being adding it to the wrong place in the puddle, let's correct all those and take a look at what it should look like when things are going really well. Now to do this, I'm set up for success here because I have my filler metal lined up coming in at a right angle to my torch. I'm going to sit there until I form a pool before I start adding any filler metal. Let's take a look at this under the hood and see what we'd be looking at. So notice how the arc starts and I'm going to move it around a little to etch some oxide and then form a pool and start dabbing my filler metal right in there up towards the leading edge. I'm a little bit towards the front, but still pretty reasonable. I'm continuing along at a pretty fair pace and you can see how the end of the filler metal ends up with this almost clipped or angled look. This is a good thing when you have that. Notice you can see it in between each dab, how it's basically flat or just a slight angle clipped off. And when I do this, I'm able to get a pretty good result out as far as the finished weld. So, so after you finish your weld, it's best if you look at your filler metal and you see a bit of an angled cut off the end rather than anything drooping down. That's an indication that things are going pretty well. You're dabbing in there quickly with intention and then getting out of that weld pool. So keep an eye on that and take a look at the end of your filler. And if things aren't going well, it's probably going to be one of these three problems. Hey, thanks a ton for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. If you learned something from this video or got some value out of it, let me know by hitting that thumbs up or leaving me a comment. And throw a comment down there if you have a question or an idea for a future video. I'd love to hear them. Thanks a ton. We'll see you next time.